Some unique items in Last Epoch are extremely focused and build enabling. Others are very generically powerful. And some you're going to have to farm for a lot of hours before you ever see one. But not these, because today I'm going to be talking about 10 relatively common unique items that I think are very powerful and I frequently use across all of my builds. As a quick disclaimer though, common does not mean you will guarantee drop one instantaneously. You might have to spend a couple hours farming for these, and especially if you're merchant skilled, it might take even longer. But hey, for a circle of fortune, I can definitely vouch that I've gotten all of these quite frequently based on my first character. And so if you need to know how to target farm any of these items, well, I've got a target farming guide, which you can watch after this. For now, let's get into things, but before I do, a quick reminder to get subscribed, leave a like while you're down there, because I'm going to be talking about more things in the future, including my build and also my experiences with the Merchant's Guild. So starting with number one, the first unique item I want to talk about is Avarice. You obtain these gloves through a quest really early on in the game, which means they're 100% guaranteed drop rate, and also one of the rarest items on this list because you can only get them once per character, and if you choose the wrong thing and get the Gambler's Fallacy, that means you have to, well, quite literally make a new character to get these. Now, there's an endgame version you can get from a Soulfire Bastion, but these really aren't focused on the endgame. There's something you wear early in the game to get Leech. And honestly, they're really, really, really good at that. So I use them on almost all of my characters as I'm leveling them. But for one that you get also fairly frequently early on, but can dig into the endgame, consider the Bleeding Heart Amulet. It's a source of generic leech, and at LPL 40, or Legendary Potential level 40, it's going to drop with Legendary Potential pretty frequently. The nice thing about this amulet is it's generic leech, so you can use it with damage over time builds. I've used it on quite a wide range of characters, including some that did damage over time and others that didn't, but didn't have anything special going on in their amulet slot. Since it's so easy to get, you'll often find that you can force either good prefixes or good suffixes, because 2 LP drops like candy, at least from my experience. On the other hand, with the build enabling side of things, we have the Cleaver Solution, which I haven't actually used personally, but I've heard so many good things about it, and it looks so insanely overpowered that I had to include it on this list, since it's a very common drop. The Cleaver Solution allows strength builds to also scale intelligence. This can be used to unlock more damage options, or alternatively, it could be used to do something like, on an intelligence build, stack a bunch of strength to get a ton of armor or other defensive benefits. It kind of works both ways. Oh, and it lets strength builds go low life, which is pretty neat. So, if you want to start cleaving things, do pick one up. The plus to skill levels is also quite nice, but definitely not why you're using the item. On the other hand, number four is probably my most used item from this list, and that is Morning Frost. Just read them for a fraction of a second and tell me what you think. Oh, wait. Okay, yes, they are disgustingly overpowered, because the more dexterity you stack, the more flat damage you get to spells and attacks. This allows for a cast on crit build to do all sorts of insane damage scaling. I mean, imagine if in Path of Exile or another ARPG, your triggering skill did as much damage as the triggered skill. Yeah, that's pretty much what Morning Frost enables, especially if you use things with simultaneous scaling. But it's not just limited to trigger builds. In fact, on my deck stacking Falconer, I also used Morning Frost and I've used it on a bow mage. I've used it on so many different builds because this item adds so much damage and it completely enables skills, which otherwise in theory would be cool, but can't be scaled by normal means. So pick one up, play the build, just pay close attention to your cold and fizz res since it does significantly tax them. Now, if you're down to hunt some bosses, then I can very much recommend the Woven Flesh. This drops from the Abomination, which is the boss of the Fall of the Outcasts, the very first timeline that you do. The main use for this is capping your crit avoidance. This removes a way for enemies to murder you, which is always good. And since it gives 100%, then you don't have to worry about it until you swap to a chest later. Unfortunately, this one can be a bit of a pain to farm since it's a boss drop if you want LP, but since it's a 50% chance to drop every time, getting one without LP is super, super easy. Personally, I don't tend to include this in my late game or final setups a lot, but I will very frequently wear it. And in fact, it's so frequent that pretty much every god on Maxwell says, hey, if you need to cap Crit Avoid in the early game, just grab this before you continue. It really is that good. On the other hand, Exsanguinous is a more endgame focused item. It's also one of the rarest things on this list, but I really wanted to include it because the power is undeniable. Exsanguinous enables the low life archetype. Essentially, you lower your life 
by wearing a bunch of items that, say, lose a percentage of your life per second, and combine that with a bunch of items, like Exsanguinous and Last Steps of a Living, which say, gain ward based on your missing life. That way, your life is constantly very low, but you're gaining massive amounts of ward per second, which works kind of like low life energy shield builds in Path of Exile and Torchlight Infinite. An infinitely recharging shield that can get kind of ridiculous once you stack up for right gear. I'm not really an expert in low life builds, I've dabbled here and there, but with the new Warlock class, I do plan to explore it more, so my next build is definitely going to take low life, well I'd say to the max, but uh, there's some very buggy and weird interactions that are ridiculous, uh, the max for an ethically sourced build. Another old favorite of mine is the Bone Clamor Barboot. This is a great generic item that gives you pretty good stats, especially if you need dexterity or intelligence, and necrotic res. I've typically gotten one or two LP drops very frequently, so what I do is I just throw random exalt at it until I hit what I want. I kind of see this as an exalt plus item, where it's really good on builds that aren't specifically low life and aren't super ward based, but do want a little bit of ward. Uh, Rune Master, for example, where you can kind of go hybrid and it's a great way to get a little bit of extra value in. Now, you can go all in, especially with a Necrotic Res stacking Warlock, and I suspect a 4LP version is very powerful for those archetypes. You can add even more Necrotic Res, maybe put on some plus skills, and go to town. That's something that I might explore in the future as I continue playing Warlock. For now, though, I'd say it's also just a great example of why, even if a unique item isn't being used for its intended purpose, it can make a great stat stick. Next up, we have Talons of Valor for All Things Falconer. It buffs the Falcon by providing up to plus four to the level of all Falcon skills. It's also a bow of base crit, which is quite nice, and the overall rolls aren't terrible. Plus, it's a level 17 item, which means you can very easily get legendary potential on it. I got and slammed dozens of them when I was playing my Falconer. Now, yes, I was target farming them, but I ended up with three 3 LP bows, which I'd say makes it very achievable as a goal, especially if you're Circle of Fortune. My overall experience is it's a hard to beat item just because of the value it offers, even if ultimately it might get outscaled by a perfect weapon. Next up, we have the Grimoire of Necrotic Elixirs, which honestly a lot of people don't use for its intended purpose as an offensive item for necrotic skills. Instead, they use it as a defensive item because it is a great way to add damage reduction and the health drain isn't all that bad, at least if you have a source of leech or regen or something like that. Definitely use this one with a little caution, but because it's incredibly common, I think 4LP is one of the most common out of any item in the game. It's a really good thing to use as a stat stick in your relic slot if you don't need specific stats there, and kind of just treat it as a exalted relic plus, since you get the really nice damage reduction whenever you hit your potion. And last but not least, the Mad Alchemist's Ladle, a really cool caster weapon that I've had a lot of fun with in the past. I find that it's not only good as a generic item to include, but if you have a lot of increases from other sources, then this is an incredibly powerful way to add an additional multiplier. Because normally for spellcasters, your weapon just adds a whole bunch of increases and some ability to apply ailments. Well, don't worry, the Mad Alchemist Little applies pretty much more ailments than anything else in the game. And it gives you more spell damage per ailment on the enemy up to the cap. So if you have enough increased damage, time to add in that multiplier, get about 1.5 times the damage that you had before. It was recently nerfed, so it's not quite as best in slot as before, but it is still very good. You farm this by confronting exiled mages. It's a moderately rare drop in terms of an individual mage kill. However, because the mages themselves are super, super common, I found it's not too hard to get one, and they drop with LP quite frequently. So these have been some of my favorite common unique items in Last Epoch, and some of the items that I find excel while not being too difficult to find. Again, do remember that relatively common is relative. It doesn't mean you're going to find one of each of these in every monolith you run. But it also means that unlike something such as Omni or Orions or Ravenous Void, you are going to find them. It's not a mythical chase item that you'll never see. In fact, I'd even go so far as to say that if your goal is to get one LP on any of these items, that's an achievable goal you can set for yourself. But now I'm curious. What are some of your favorite unique items in Last Epoch? And which items do you find to be the most helpful, either for the early game or for the late game? Let me know down below, and also let me know if you want to see more videos highlighting items like this and what you'd like to see. With that said, if you're looking for something else to watch, do be sure to check out my target farming guide so that you can learn where to find these items. Now before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their continued support. For as little as $1 a month, you can make videos just like this one possible. 
Link to support is below, and hey, you might even see your name on screen, just like these fine folks here. And also, a big thanks to everyone who stayed till the end. Since you stayed this long, you've received a plus 10 luck buff, and you'll find one of these items in your next 10 monoliths. Okay, admittedly, I don't have a power to do that, but if I did, I'd definitely give it to you. And so with that, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.